But, you know, I, I want one of the reasons I was really happy to have you on, on the podcast is um, to educate people, to, to make them understand that it's more than just certifying something for robotic mowing. What you do is so much more in-depth. Um, and I, I want to allow you to basically explain that to people so they understand. So, you know, when you're training these people, you just said you, you were, you're working with the second largest municipality right now, you know, what is part of that training? You know, what are, what are you doing for them and what are you getting them to grasp and understand? Yeah, it's uh, the, 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 well, I use the LA Unified School District as an example. Um, basically the first step is this orientation uh, with their crews and and the start of a behavior modification. So how we're tackling it with them is all of their staff members, uh, crew members and management have taken our online certification course first. It's 15 lesson plans. It gives the fundamentals and the basics, uh, not only just conceptually, but there's actually of some how to do in that. Uh, and, and that is transitioning from internal combustion to lower impact technologies. I wanna stress though, this is not cold turkey. This is where it's economically and workload feasible to do so. Um, gas tools are still necessary for various workloads, but we're able to minimize um, the, the impacts of operations uh, in these large institutional settings. Um, following the uh, online certification, we conduct classroom sessions. Uh, there's a lot of robust Q&A in these classroom sessions. And then finally, after the classroom sessions, we go out and we do field sessions. And these field sessions include um, basically workload production verification, if you will. So we will take gas tools out, bring the electric ones side by side, and we will time the workload production rate capability. That way it's black and white. There's no gray areas. It's all data and metric driven, not politically driven. And we're really able to get in there and facilitate um, this change, but we're able to do it again with those metrics, with that data and where it makes sense to do so. Yeah, so, I mean, that's something that I love about your organization is that, uh, you know, everything is driven by by metrics and results, basically. And I, and I do like that, uh, you know, you guys kind of say, okay, this is, you, you know, when I first met you, you'll give percentages, like we're 80% there. Or we can basically use electric hand tools for seven months out of a operating uh, season, you know, um, because because there there is nothing to do with politics and, and what you're doing. I, I've always felt like what you're doing is is for the industry, but that leads me into my question, you know, why did you start ANZA? You know, we, we all do things because of, what, you know, a certain passion or gut instinct. So, you know, explain kind of the pivot point in Dan's life where you were doing something different and said, man, the world needs ANZA. <laughs> well, thank you. Great question. I, I think it was... When I circled back to this industry, I, I said, you know what, I, I really love this industry. Um, when, I, when I graduated junior college, I'm going to circle back to it. And I, I, I went at it again with gas. And then I realized, wow, uh, there's a lot of complaints, especially about the noise. And then I myself, um, I was not reacting well. Um, as a human being to operating the gas tools as far as like, whoa, this is a, a lot of uh, fumes and, and, and vibration on the equipment. So again, back in the mid 2000s, I said, I, I'm going to try something entirely different and novel. And I researched what gas alternatives were out there. And there was not a lot. Lithium did not exist back then. Um, so it was like, lead acid, nickel cadmium, brush motor technology. I was using stuff with cords and I was even uh, getting help, receiving help uh, from some friends in the aerospace industry to help me bootstrap some lithium batteries to interface with some of the equipment that existed on the market there. So it was really my personal experiences growing up in the industry, you know, kind of being in a way forced uh, into the industry as a worker. 
and then circling back to it in that experience. And I don't know, it was just an epiphany and it became then a, a business proposition. We built a route up of 70 clients. They were paying on average 30 to 35% more. Uh, the margins were acceptable, even without the lithium tools that exist today. And then of course, um, all of the other things that go with the industry, the enhancement works, um, uh, the plantings, the, 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 the native uh, garden installations, um, water-wise irrigation, there was a, a, a lot of business out there to be had and still is today. 